What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Phase 6, your source for music, business, motivation, and support. It's your boy, Sir Love, and I'm back with the first episode of Question and Answer Q&A. Ask Sir, I don't know what I'm going to call this thing, but uh, you ask it, I answer it. That's what I'm getting ready to jump into. And so I uh, got my computer right here to the left of me. I'm going to see who has been reaching out to me and what they've been reaching out about. Yeah, Aaron Clark reaches out. He says, hello, Sir Love. What is the process of creating an electronic song in the studio? How does a situation like that work? More importantly, how does it work financially? How does the studio charge for something like this by the hour question mark per song question mark? And does the same thing go for royalties as you explained in your first videos? Thank you very much. Well, this is a very multi-layered question. Uh, I mean, I guess if you're reaching out, why, why not put as many in there as you can? So the first question was, what is the process of creating an electronic song in the studio? And by electronic, I'm assuming you're not in reference, trying to reference a genre or anything like that, like EDM, like electronic dance music or something like that. Then maybe you're uh, trying to reference the process of creating music using virtual instruments in today's time so that process is pretty simple um just, i'll just kick it kick it real simple a lot of you guys already know this process if you're producers out there first thing you need to do is download some type of software that allows you to do such um i used to use fruity lubes i know reasons is hot i know garage band is hot i know there's a couple other different apps you can always go through uh pro tools there's very other different various different systems you can use there's a lot of logic fans out there whatever first you need to get the program or the app that you're going to use to create your instrument all these different apps have different packs where you can get sounds you can use you know different file formats for the sounds different sound qualities all this other type of stuff you import those sounds and then there's virtual instruments virtual instruments meaning a virtualized piano a virtualized guitar a virtual a virtual version of something that historically was played by an individual right and you can hook up what's called a controller to that thing normally controllers come in a form of pianos but they have controllers that look like recorders they have controllers that look like drum machines they have controllers that actually look like an actual drum set but you hook the controller up and you can play any virtual instrument from any controller that you want to play and that's how you record your music that's how you make beats today so the answer is no to the other question do not need some type of sound booth in order to make beats in today's time period you really don't even need a sound booth to record records in today's time period anymore um even i think beyonce what hit record was that i think uh the one that we we be all night that record i don't think she recorded that in the booth i uh, don't quote me on it. i'm pretty sure some video footage on it it was either that one or the my hands up my hands up i put up in my hands up one of those records it was really cool you know they, they showed behind the scenes footage of it and she was out in the studio floor she wasn't in a recording booth recording that and that's because the microphones have gotten so good um in today's time that you don't necessarily have to be in a booth and then there's just different fields right microphones today give you so much clarity in the record that sometimes you're not looking for that clarity sometimes Sometimes you want a little grunge feel on the record and so you'll take the studio the artist out the booth and it's just the feel and it may feel cooler being right next to the uh, to the uh to the engineer i know dre does it like that a lot now i mean it's just really up to you and and your preference in reference to that all right uh another portion of this question so i think i answered the question on how does this work in reference to how to actually do this. You download the software, you install your plugins, you install your sounds, you start making your beats, you, you, you follow the instructions, you look at videos on YouTube, there's people that are teaching you how to use these softwares, use it, get good at it, that's how you do it, right? But then you ask, how does it work financially? Well, that's really easy to break down. Back in the day, what used to happen is they used to pay a band, right? And so that band might have been paid work for hire, and a work for hire was a situation in which you got a check, you gave up all the rights to whatever you created for in exchange for that check check so you might have been paid a salary you might have been paid every one-off time you came to the studio it was a fee that was negotiated between you the instrumentalist and the person that was cutting the check and the person that was cutting the check is the person that then owns the stuff that you created while you was in the lab now it could have been broken down other ways if that owner didn't have the money to cut you a check that owner may have included you in on the paperwork and gave you percentage and ownership of some of that record therefore when that record got released whatever percentage that you owned of the record whenever checks were cut 
cut, you will get your percentage of the record. A lot of times that's not how it's done because it's real messy. Anytime you want to get the song played on the radio, it has to be cleared by all the rights holders. And if you got a random drummer on there and you got to, and he might, you know, you got to be honest, he might be a rock and roller and he might do drugs on the side and he may not be the most business astute person that you got to listen to. Or he could be a very astute person and he could be overly protective about his music and he might not want his music played on a Crest commercial. You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of times they'll uh, try to cut all the other decision makers out by just buying into the rights. But back in the day, it was work for hire, most likely. Nowadays, um, to kind of show you financially how it works, you don't have to pay all these different people to play all these different parts of a record to make a record happen. You can have one producer go in there and make a whole song. He can play the guitar part. He can play the sax part. He can play. I mean, that's like a producer skill set now. You can hop on all these various different virtual machines and use a piano and your skill set can allow you to play the piano like a guitar or play the, the piano like a saxophone. Like those are your skill sets, right? And that's what makes producers really fly, right? Um, you may actually bring in real people and you probably still do a work for hire situation for those individuals just like you did back in the day. So financially, you give the person that plays on the instrument or plays on the track uh, a check and the producer that orchestrates everything else, you know, normally gets some type of rights and things of that nature for what they're doing. Um, this is, you know, it can be done various different ways depending on who's doing what and how things are being done, but generally, that's how it's gonna go down. And the last question was, how does a studio charge for something like this? Well, a studio is gonna charge you, most studios charge per hour, right? But most people that are actually uh, instrumentalists and or, or producers and making different beats, they have this software, they can do it at home, they can get a laptop and they can have a pair of headphones and they can do it on a go, on a bus. You got people with apps doing it on their cell phones, riding down the street. Like, you don't need a studio to make these things happen anymore. So when it comes to how much does it cost, it really depends on you. Sometimes sometimes you want to be in a producer or a big studio because it inspires you in some type of way. Other times you don't, you don't care about it. So um, it's really up to you on that one. You got to figure that out on your own. And the last thing you ask is, does the same thing go for royalties? Um, I'm not sure. You, you mentioned the last video. I'm not sure which video you're talking about, so I can't answer that question, but I hope I was able to answer all your questions. For everyone else that wants to send questions in, hope this was helpful for whoever else wanted to know these same things. If you want to send your questions in, go to www.phasevi.com. Go to the contact page and send a message. Uh, there's a big box there. You can attach files if you want us to listen to stuff, things of that nature. Make sure you check the box and let us know what we're getting ready to talk about. And um, I'm starting this new thing. I'm, every Sunday I do this anyway. Way. I'm just figuring I'll record it now. So uh, you never know if you're going to be the one chosen. Shoot me um, your questions um, on the site, www.phasevi.com, and I will get them back to you as soon as I can. And I don't know everything, but I know a lot about a little and a little about a lot, and I'm on this thing trying to give you guys everything that I got. Uh, phase six, click that six, subscribe.